Welcome to another episode of Hereford FC here in Vanilla FM and today we're going to take a look at what happened in the winter transfer window uh, and also what's happening with us. So we are actually overachieving massively, I think, in my opinion. We should be, I was hoping just for a playoff position, but we are solidly in the lead, seven points ahead from second place. Uh, it was like an uphill journey really, starting off sort of in the mid um, mid table sort of positions and then slowly creeping up um, as the season went on. We're not massive goal scorers, I must admit, uh, but we are managing to um, get some points. So if you look at our schedule, the first half of the season is very, very good. Uh, we got knocked out of the Carabao Cup in the second round and then from the Papa John's Trophy in the um, in the second round as well, if I could find it there. And in the Epic Cup in the second round. So we managed to get through at least one round of each, which is great. Uh, and then from then on, it's been, we've had a few losses, but it's been okay. It's been uh, stable. As far as the team goes, we've done three transfers and one other change to our squad. So if you look at the squad, we have one new goalkeeper. Uh, Scottish goalkeeper Lewis Budinaukas. He's come to replace um, Sam Blair, who we sold. Um, and the other change we did was around the midfield. Actually, we did two changes around the midfield. Uh, the first change was to bring in Leon Mc McKinney. It's actually a forced change because Huno left. He was recalled from loan. So this was a, a forced change. We didn't want to do this change. Uh, the other change in the midfield is we just swapped two players around. So we put uh, Waterstone back in the under 23s and we brought back Alex McBride to play in the um, center midfield position. And now he's ready for first team again. And the last change is in the right of attack. We went and got a loan for Tom Allen, uh, just because um, Anton Yazzi was starting to decline quite rapidly. So we, we kind of just shelved them now in the um, in the tw 23s, but we hopefully we can sell them in the future. So those are all the changes for the uh, squad. Dynamics are looking really impressive. We've got a good balance of hierarchy. Um, hopefully we get another team leader soon. And we'll just go on from there. Now the next match is against Rockdale. And I've already selected the squad. We are having a few um, fitness issues and stuff. So we are every now and then having to play with uh, youth players. So today we're going to play with Guy on the left side of attack. But yeah, so every now and then we're having to kind of compromise a little bit. But we'll see what this game brings. We're still over the same ownership. No, no fresh money or fresh ownership at all at the club, which is much, much needed because we, um, we can't do any proper transfers. Uh, really, we can we having to rely on free signings and loans, which isn't ideal, especially with loan cap. Uh, so, um, hopefully, fresh money will come soon. Now, it looks like we will get promoted, uh, possibly even without a playoff. So, I'm hoping this will trigger some sort of investment or uh, I don't know, new owner, new new ownership would be nice. Uh, but yeah, something that will bring us some money. That's the ideal. We just had confirmation that we are clear of relegation completely. So we just spent a lot of money on um, bonuses for all those players that had that um, re re a relegation avoidance clause. So let's see. <clears throat> wow, Chesterfield is way behind. 
in terms of matches. Three matches behind other people. All right. Um, you're gonna come in. And Pope is not on the bench, but I think if you bring in Adrian, then that'd be fine. Okay. Not Adrian, Ajani. Keep forgetting names of players every now and then, just because um, that's just the way it is. Now, um, yeah, so we're looking pretty good compared to the other teams. That's quite surprising, actually. Um, but yeah, we've been able to have a pretty good defense mainly. That's our strong, strong point is our defense. Not so great in attack, but because we're defending so well, um, where our attack isn't having to do quite so much in terms of goal scoring. But uh, hopefully things will improve. Okay, so that's one draw. Let's see if I can squeeze in another match into this episode. Um, Swindon next, who are ninth. So where's, didn't Chesterfield have like masses of, where's Chesterfield now? There. Okay. So they played now. But there's still two matches behind. <clears throat> uh, nope, thanks. I'm not interested in um, doing any duels really outside the transfer window because I, I kind of decided what you know, who's going to go into what. Our youth team is doing really well. Um, we've got fixtures. They've been knocked out of the FA. And it looks like they were knocked out of the uh, cup as well. Yeah, they just missed out. Okay. But for the league, they're doing well. They are... Wow, 15 points ahead. That's really good. No losses recorded yet. Yeah, so they've got this one in the bag, I think. It's going to be hard for them to lose first place, I think. Um, yeah. Youth candidates have been evaluated as well, so hopefully we'll get some uh, new players coming through to our youth teams that are a little bit exciting. Still not being able to make any improvements in our facilities or youth setup or anything like that. Uh, which is a shame because obviously they degrade slightly over time if you don't update them. They haven't degraded yet. I think the only facility that degraded was the youth facility that degraded slightly over time. But the others haven't. So that's good. Oh, the other thing is I got... I forgot to mention this in the last episode, actually, but I've been now 10 complete seasons at the club. So I got the little Steam notification for that. Steam achievement. And I've been handed a new contract and for the further two years at the club, which I think includes this season. So it sees me through the, through the end of this season and the next. I think that's what the deal is. Actually, let's check that now. Um, so contracts until the end, yeah, until the end of next season. We've got no money for these, but I'm going to try and ask for it anyway. Let's just have a look at the dynamics then. Just comes has gone up. Let's see if this will jiggle a little bit. Yeah, okay. 
We managed to change Phil Pope from an ambitious to balanced. I got rejected as I expected. Okay, now let's have a look. So this guy's been doing a cracking job at, at goal, so let's leave him on. I'll leave you on. I might put him back. Um Okay, I need to bring McBride in for injury replacement. Um, I'll leave you on. Uh, <coughs> Ian Davis is back. Ian Davis hasn't been doing too great actually lately. Okay, so that's the starting 11. And then we're going to have. Uh, these guys I need. Uh, let me just get him out. Let me just check what other options we've got. I've got you. Okay, so maybe let's bring Antoniazzi back from the. Not quite from the dead, but almost. Put him on the bench. Um. And then let's leave Guy on the bench. Okay, so that's our base. And then we just stick some more players on there. Um, so I got five, so I can't put Pennington. But I can put Baker on. Uh, Pope misses out. Let's go. <sighs> it looks like Chesterfield's been catching up. Poor pass there by McBride. Just misjudged slightly the timing. It's a good idea though. Nice. Okay, so 11 goals was his... Uh, he's marked his score last season, so anything, any goals that he scores from now on will be an improvement on last season, which is good. So Exeter was top of the table for a long time, but they seem to have lost their groove. Another thing that I want to ask the board about, but they keep rejecting it every single time, is a senior affiliate. I feel like, although, um, like the last edition of the game, I never managed to get any decent affiliate loans, but, but that's, you know, we could at least try to get one of the big clubs to be our affiliate and um, maybe get some loans that way. That would be good. All right, so first half went to plan. Let's carry on with the second half straight away. No changes needed. Yeah, 
Your neighbors have got a chance here. Is he gonna? Oh, nice. He managed to squeeze it in. McBride with the two assists. I think you squeeze it in between the keeper and the post. Yeah. Nice one. Crossing to the area. McBride couldn't get in there. Got counter attack here from Swin. That's pretty excellent counter attack. Can't blame. Can't really blame our keeper at all. Maybe other fence could have done better, but yeah. yeah. Ooh, big sound. Right. And the last few subs. Actually, I haven't done any subs yet, have I? So let's do that. Uh, just come, can come in, Zordania. And. Ooh. I'm going to put in. Actually. Baker hasn't played in a while, so let's get him in. Nicely caught there by Lewis. Oh no, they pulled level. All right, we need a goal. <laughs> Right, come on. We're gonna need the goal. I think it's like the guys are getting tired now. I don't think it's gonna happen. All right, it's another draw. Two draws in this episode. Not the most exciting thing, but. At least we're still top of the table with six points difference. And, well, if Exeter win the next match, then it'll be five points difference. Actually, Chesterfield might be closer to... If Chesterfield wins the next two matches, they'll be only two points away from us. So, lots of things to consider. I'll come back again towards the end of the... Um, towards the end of the league as usual and then just show you the kind of the the closing game or the closing couple of matches of the league thanks so much for watching until the end and don't forget to like and subscribe you can also check out patreon take care bye bye